Embellishments can be an expensive thing to buy commercially, but what if I can show you how to make beautiful vellum embellishments like flowers and butterflies? Let me show you how. Today I'm going to be using Woodware's Ditsy Daisy stamp along with some embossing powders and some vellum that you can heat emboss on. Now this is Recollections brand vellum. It isn't anything special and remarkably I can heat emboss on it. Any stamp here will work as long as your stamp has quite a bit of open space. You want to be able to color and see embossing powder on it and I'll show you why shortly. I'm using an acrylic block to mount my stamp. However, if you're more comfortable using a stamping platform, this will work for that as well. I am going over my vellum with some anti-static powder. Um, I don't want any of that embossing powder to stick and we're going to be using quite a bit of embossing powder because I'm going to show you three different ways to color this up. And I'm simply going to stamp it down in Versamark clear sticky ink. Now this whole thing is a bit of an experiment, but I'm going to use three different colors of embossing powder and three different ways to color my images. And that way we can kind of keep track of which one is which, which one you like more, which one you may not like at all. So each time I go ahead and stamp down my daisy, I'm going to go ahead and emboss it. This one I'm using Ranger's Superfine White Embossing Powder. Because I don't want to mix my embossing powders, I am going to go ahead and heat emboss it just after I put my powder down. It is super imperative that you heat up your heat gun. Um, I'm the first one to tell you I am absolutely an impatient person when it comes to this, but if you don't want your vellum to warp, go ahead and heat that gun up for at least 30 seconds. The next big tip that I can possibly give you is to make sure that you're holding your vellum up off of your work surface. You want the heat to transfer from your heat gun through your vellum. And if you hold it up away, it will melt faster for you. I would be very cautious to make sure that you're not overheating your embossing powder for this technique. If you find that your embossing powder is flaking off when you're doing the next part of the technique, then you've overheated the embossing powder. With the first flower done, I'm going to go ahead and heat emboss two more daisies, one in copper and one, God help me, in black sparkle. Now, if y'all have never embossed anything in black or black sparkle, be well warned and prepared. It is messy. <laughs> it's fun. It's beautiful, but it is messy. I really don't know what the difference in the consistency is, but black embossing powder to me seems like it's much finer, more powder like than granular like. And um, well, Everything's going to wear black embossing powder when you use it, but like I said, it really does come out beautifully. It's just a little messier to use, but what's a little mess when you're creating art? Another tip that I can give you when heat embossing on vellum is to make sure that you don't hold your heat gun directly on the vellum, but for short bursts of time because your vellum will warp ultimately if it has too much heat. Don't you just love the sparkle from this black sparkle embossing powder? It is so beautiful, I can't even describe it. Now through the magic of editing, I've gone ahead and embossed that third image. And I'm gonna use three different techniques to color up my daisies. The first, Crayola washable markers. I gotta tell you, out of the three, this is my most favorite and the least expensive. So if you just have regular washable markers, raid your kid's stash or uh, your own stash for that matter, and come up with some colors. I wanted this to be super vibrant, so I'm using a bright blue and I'm gonna color on top of the vellum. If you want this to be more muted, you can color the underside of the vellum, but I really wanted bright, vibrant colors for these flowers. 
Now, because I embossed this first one with white, I am avoiding the white embossing powder. It would just wipe off ultimately, but I'm just using it as an outline to go ahead and color my petals. And uh, I'm gonna speed this up and get through it. This would be a great project for once you've finished heat embossing to get your kids involved or your grandkids involved and have them color their flowers any way they want. Crayola markers are really where it's at in this case. With my blue flower complete, it is still wet. Um, I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna color the center of my flower um, from the back side. I want this to be a little bit more muted, more dull than the front. Um, and I just place it on top of a paper towel so if any of the blue comes off, well, it's absorbed by the paper towel and doesn't make a mess of my work surface. If you recall earlier, I said that your surface of the vellum may still be a little wet and if you get anything on your embossing powder, it will just wipe off. So that's exactly what I did just there. I just dabbed up anything, kind of using that embossing powder as an ink resist. For the second, which is the copper embossed flower, I'm gonna be using Classique by Spectrum Noir. These are alcohol-based markers and uh, we're gonna give these a shot to see how these do on the vellum. I am far from a colorist. I just do what makes me feel happy. So um, please don't look at this as if I'm some sort of major coloring expert, because I certainly am not. I am gonna use two different colors, Satsuma OR1 and Nectarine, which is OR2. And um, I'm gonna attempt to do a little shading here and we'll see how this works out. With the darker of the two colors, I'm just gonna follow my image and the embossing powder and draw in some lines and make a little shading, but nothing major. At this point, I can pretty much tell you that the difference that I noticed between the Crayola markers and the alcohol markers are that the Crayola markers are a little less transparent. Um, they are more vibrant, but that could just be the choice of colors here. Taking a quick closer peek, they are really pretty. For the third flower, I'm gonna be using some Distress Oxides and I'm going to paint it on with some water. So I've selected fossilized amber, aged mahogany, and vintage photo. And um, I really wanted a more sunflower look, so let's see how this one goes. I'm simply smishing my fossilized amber onto my glass mat and spraying it down with a little bit of water. Then just using a regular old paintbrush, I'm gonna go ahead and paint my daisy. I have to say, I really love how these are coming out. However, I'm gonna kick it up one more notch. You could certainly leave it here and call it a day, but let's see what else I've cooked up. I'm gonna finish this one off with a little aged mahogany just in the center and on the top this time. Send some pixie dust by giving me a thumbs up, subscribing, and ringing that notification bell. At this point, you could certainly fussy cut them out and leave them as is. The one thing I can say is that now that they're colored, you won't see the adhesive on the back very easily. Now, if you wanna kick this up, I'm gonna use some pops of color in Glitter Snowflake. Now, this is a clear pop of color, kind of like glossy accents, but it has glitter embedded in it already. I highly recommend squeezing a small amount of your pops of color or Nouveau drops, whatever, onto a scrap piece of paper or a paper towel so you can get out any little air bubbles that might be in your bottle. Just like when I colored the petals, I am going to add pops of color onto each individual petal. I'm not going to cover all of that embossing powder, just what's in the center of my design. Now this 
third section of the technique does take the longest because you need to apply it and um, you need to be careful because unlike me, you don't want to stick your hand in your product, which I did at some point, um, but you also need to let it cure and that's going to take a little while, but there was an unexpected happy occurrence that happens towards the end of the drying process. So hang on towards the end so I can share that with you. Now for the second flower, I'm also going to use pops of color, but this one's going to be in glitter champagne. And this is a lovely golden color. Um, the base of this has a little bit of a yellow tinge. So I was interested to see how the alcohol marker on top of the vellum interacted with the pops of color as opposed to the watercolor marker. Now you can't see the final product yet, but they do turn out just beautifully. For my third example, I'm going to use glossy accents and separate glitter. Now this is super fine wow glitter, but maybe you don't have Nuvo drops or pops of color, but glossy accents happens to be a little bit easier for you to find, or you already have it. So that's why I wanted to include it. And I'm going to speed this way up because it's exactly the same thing. Only this time I'm going to add a layer of glitter on top of my glossy accents while it's still wet. Tap off any excess glitter so that you don't, in the words of my son, contaminate your workspace and uh, set your project aside to dry while we go ahead and make the card bases for these. For my first background, I'm going to be using some Distress Oxides to do a little ink blending in brushed corduroy, aged mahogany, and walnut stain. Since this does not need to be a very even blend, I am just using my Recollections cardstock and I am literally just slapping the color on. It does not have to be perfect by any stretch of the imagination because we're going to dry emboss this afterwards with a wood grain panel. To keep your cardstock from cracking in your embossing folder, give it a quick mist on the back of the card so that your ink doesn't react with the water, and then go ahead and run it through your die cut machine. Okay, that background is complete. Let's move on to the next one. My second background super easy. Once again, I'm using some Distress Oxides in Lost Shadow, Hickory Smoke, and Pumice Stone. And I'm going to stencil on just part of this kind of net image as well as some alphabets and they're super random. I'm just going to kind of once again slap them all over. I do change up the orientation of my letters. Sometimes I make them straight up and down. Sometimes I make them on a diagonal and it really just doesn't matter. I just want a little bit of background noise because this one's gonna go with my yellow flower, which was the last one that we did, and I want the flower to be the focal point. I'm using these little detail brushes that I got off Amazon. If you're interested in any of the supplies, I will list them below for you, but these little detail brushes were super inexpensive and they work really well. I'm super impressed. A quick tidy up and we're on to card base number three. My third card, I'm going to do a little ink blending and splattering and all the fun stuff. And I'm using scattered straw. Now you could totally use a solid color of cardstock. I just didn't have anything that I thought would work. And once again, I didn't really care how even a blend this is. I just wanted to get the color on the card. It will even out as it dries. Next up is Rusty Hinge. Now I'm just going to put some of this on my glass uh, mat and add some water and then I'm going to use an old piece of packaging and I'm just going to sop it up with the packaging so I have a little bit more control over where I'm putting this. You could totally do splatter if you wanted to but 
I needed just a little bit more control this go around, so a piece of cellophane packaging was a great option. And with my typical lack of patience, I whipped out the heat gun and went ahead and dried this layer of ink. Once that layer is dry, I'm going to bring in some fired brick. Now I am just going to smush a little bit onto that same piece of cellophane and add some water and get a fan brush because now it's time to get my splatter on. Earlier, I mentioned that there was a unusual surprise about how my vellum dried and if you look you'll see that it's kind of crinkling up now I don't know what it's doing chemically to the vellum but it's kind of puffing up and giving that flower extra dimension and it's super cool now while it dries you can actually on the back of the vellum kind of push it up to mold it and uh, it'll hold that shape it's super cool Going back to my woodware stamp set, I've selected two more stamps. I'm gonna use that little scripty uh, rectangular stamp as well as one of the leaf bundles, and I'm going to complete the background with those. Now, to do the background, I want this to be rather subtle, so I'm using bundled sage for my little scripty stamp, and once again, I'm just kinda of plopping it on there. Now, do you have problems deciding what colors to use for your backgrounds? I have a little shorts playlist of Distress Oxide blends that may just be the ticket to helping you pick out better colors. And I'm gonna follow this up with the leaf stamp and I'm gonna use Forest Moss because I want the leaf to be a little bit more prominent than that other subtle background hint of the script. Now here's a pretty cool tip. If you want your background papers to look more like pattern paper, just make sure that you turn your stamp this way and that way, stamp off the edge, um, flip it around so that it doesn't look intentional. This is an example of yet another stamp that you can create to get a beautiful vellum embellishment. Now let me know in the comments below which of the final three cards is your favorite. Now our final three cards show you the beautiful texture that we get from our vellum embellishments. They are stunning. I finished each card off with the same sentiment and a cute little fairy that is colored to match. I hope you enjoyed my video. I'll see you real soon.